Right, so the scene was found in uh, Simultala in Bihar and it was quite extraordinary and the tree itself is very big and wonderful place and there is hardly any people which is quite a contrast. There are a few farmers and that's all. So anyway, I did, uh, you know, I took a photograph at that point and then decided to uh, turn it into a painting and it was just I mean um, even at the photograph stage I knew what it uh, required and it was just a perfect photograph which is quite a difficult thing so as you've seen that I did a tonal drawing and then on this particular warm ground I have moved on with a block in it with uh, some amount of uh, Prussian blue and the blue that I'm using is Prussian blue because uh, I quite find that uh, it's a beautiful blue no doubt quite powerful but beautiful so I'm covering all the areas and uh, this is like a base layer rather than a block in but you know it's okay I mean, this is the primary layer upon which another layer and the final detailing layer uh, will be done. So this is like a primary layer. That's uh, what I should call it. So I'm putting down the colors and these uh, colors will be seen uh, through the upper layers as well. So this is what I follow and I follow this because I found that, you know, 19th century masters did this kind of painting. Their techniques actually had a layered approach rather than following the impressionistic approach which was done by the impressionists and sort of a direct approach but this is an indirect one and there is a good scope of detail in this. I do suggestive detail but before that I put these layers. So you can see that uh, this part is quite dark because there will be whitish or yellowish layers on top of it which are mostly done through dry brush here i am leaving some indications about uh, how it should look like so with a very fluffy brush you can see that these brushes are just like very thick and they uh, carry a lot of uh, paint but mostly this is uh, not a very thick paint that i'm painting with these are just uh, you know average to bare minimum that's all and here i am putting down thickened or oh, whitish yellow ochre uh, paint on top of uh, those layers to indicate there are some areas where there is no grass this area is dry this is not a very wet area so i am using mostly scrubby brush strokes and these are actually like a toothbrush grip you can say or rather a sword grip but i prefer toothbrush because that is the how i that is the way i paint in this case and you can see that this is actually a toothbrush kind of a way but this is very thick paint and i'm indicating the central focal point already so that i have a clear vision about which way i wish to go but this is not such a complex painting in terms of composition because it was clear to me from the very beginning. Now you can see that I am putting down uh, upper layers in a very scrubby manner on top of those darkened marks. And this is the modeling phase that I am entering into upon the base layer. And this is the second layer. So we'll call it upper layer, now second layer, and you can see that uh, the primary layer is also visible. And this creates an automatic, you know, integration of uh, the things that are underneath. I mean, the thing that uh, Cezanne attempted with, uh, you know, his techniques to uh, indicate the solidity of an object. I generally try to follow a homogeneous uh, brushstroke pattern 
but sometimes I try to avoid and focus on, you know, the texture or the nature of the surface. Here I am doing the trees and this is a very big eucalyptus tree and you know from a distance the eucalyptus tree leaves look very fluffy so that is trying that is what i'm trying to achieve here but you can see the underneath layers will be used as uh, the internal section of the trees so you know i am more or less comfortable in painting the lighter areas so i'm leaving mostly the darker areas or maybe painting them later but not now so this way of painting with an uh, you know under painting already is very easy now you can see that i'm using the same scrubby strokes to indicate the upper layers of the sky Previously, there was this uh, block in or primary layer. Now, this scrubby brush strokes will create the illusion of leaves already on top of uh, the green paint. And I'm covering some, leaving some. So, it will reveal some of it and, you know, cover some of it. So, it's going to create that sort of, uh, you know, impression from a distance. Oil paintings are meant to be seen from a distance. Just to let you know that uh, this painting is about winter and this is Indian winter most in most areas. This is not a European winter. Probably your summer will be uh, looking like this. But uh, this is Indian winter and this is quite a comfortable time in most uh, of, the, of the areas in North India, maybe some in South. But I'm not sure whether South India sees uh, a winter like North India, but, uh, you know, that's all about it. And you can see that I'm rolling the brushes to create the shimmering effect of light. So light is also very important in my paintings. So this is not just about, uh, you know, the techniques per se, because you can see the techniques that I'm employing and... Uh, but actually the feeling of comfort, feeling of happiness, all of these things are very important in this painting. And, you know, sort of a peace, a peacefulness, I can say. Because this place doesn't have much. I mean, it's a very remote place. Um, but the strange thing is that some of the nearer areas are actually high-density tourist places because of uh, religious reasons. But this place is not a very popular one. It sees some tourist um, footfall, but nowadays, uh, you know, even now, it, it, it is quite remote. So it has some amount of peacefulness into it. So I want to create that sort of uh, effect or the feeling of, uh, you know, uh, the restfulness or something like that. Here you can see that there are warm under layers and I'm putting, uh, you know, whitish paint on top of uh, those layers to create the shimmering effect. This is an announcement. If you wish to learn realistic oil painting without breaking the bank, then you can contact me directly. There is a method to follow. After following the method, the student will be able to convert any subject realistically as they see. For more information, you can contact me here. Thank you. Well, now let's get back to painting. And uh, you, as you can see, I'm done with the foliage part, indicating which goes where. And now I am focusing on the branches. It's important for me to uh, know which uh, foliage goes where. Overall shapes are very important for me because if I see any uh, you know anomalies in there, I am very uncomfortable with that. So I need to do the foliage beforehand and then I can cover up with more paint later on. But I need to do the branches as a secondary uh, object. So here I'm doing the branches. This uh, paint is slightly more oily now. Paint also is darker in value and I can add 
more uh, colors on top of it and it will look quite normal so here i'm uh, you know doing the other branches and creating interesting shapes so that uh, everything looks normal this is not a copy of the photograph that i took they uh, convey only the details and what sort of things were there but apart from that all the shapes that you see are you know following my in instincts and this is how my painting develops they are not copies of any photograph whatsoever a general idea and some details of the things that are there and apart from that and here, here you can see that how thin the marks can be this is quite oily this paint so it moves a lot when it's pushed sort of like a flick and i am holding the brush in the at the at in the end with supported uh, between my thumb and index finger and when you flick it the paint will move so this is not like a very runny paint but this has uh, enough amount of medium into it so this can be quite helpful you can see how thin the lines can be and when the brush is not that uh, thin this is not a rigger or of any kind riggers generally tend to provide uh, very linear homogeneous um, sort of marks and i don't need that i need all the things to be interfered by atmosphere the textures of other things the heat light everything so need to have that shimmering quality so that is my approach which i don't think goes away from the historic way of uh, painting so this is uh, something that i'm following and you can see that uh, you already get a sense of the sunlight that is present this is not a very dark painting this is winter but this is very sh sunny as well and almost afternoon and here i am using riggers to indicate some very thin marks to reduce the time but this is just underneath uh, or internal areas of the branches very thin marks and how thin you can go now i am using sort of like a warmish gray color on top of these marks to create the indications and i am leaving out the bottom part of uh, the the branches and the stems so here i am paying attention which part is receiving maximum amount of light which part is not receiving it so i have to be careful about that and which part is more exposed so that part will have more of this paint and it will become even lighter because there will be highlights so i'm being very careful and gentle uh, these are some of the highlight colors so there will be white yellow marks as well so my objective here is to be very careful and uh, take my time with full concentration i don't want any mistakes so i am identifying which part is exposed and which part is not i am not focusing on any other areas but here you can see that i'm also extending some of the areas with some hits and misses so they will have that naturalistic abstract feeling and this is a dagger brush for flat marks and with very thin marks i'm using a very thin bristle round bristle rounds are my most favorite because they give you the abstraction in a split second and which is not possible with flats i feel not possible with flats uh, that effectively they are for covering areas but uh, you know rounds are like you know the most absolutely indispensable for me because they carry the paint uh, on all sides and if you are running out of paint in one side then you can just twist it a little and then it will deposit so you're not running out of paint so they are very useful so you can see i'm taking my time 
and you know observing very carefully what uh, where things are heading now you can see this is a almost uh, a destroyed brush and i am using this brush to create the foliage this is actually a filbert but which has lost its shape and these brushes are very useful i generally do not throw away brushes unless they have nothing on them at all so these two brushes are very old the filbert one is actually 24 years old it was it was i think my third brush that i bought so here i'm putting down some dark you know areas upon which i can put some lighter areas but they also carry the prussian blue as well this painting has prussian blue and i think the palette is quite easy i don't discuss the palette too much because they are mostly the variations of red yellow blue here the blue is prussian blue and uh, you know the brown is there burnt sienna yellow ochre and sap green and there is also chrome yellow deep and titanium white i think uh, sap green is used very limited in this because i think i have used mostly the prussian blue and uh, you know chrome yellow deep to mix the greens and also yellow occur as well but here you can see that uh, this part is receiving less light so it's getting bluer and here i'm doing the darker marks again this is a mix of uh, burnt sienna which is dark orange and prussian blue so it's get we are getting a very dark mix so when we need to lighten we need to add a little bit of uh yellow whether it's yellow ochre or chrome yellow deep so you can see the paints are getting darker up, upon which i will paint the lighter uh, marks you can see that uh, this a uh, brush is very useful it's even now after so many years of painting it's producing abstract marks trees are about balance they are not about symmetry so i follow that principle and you can very easily create a realistic looking tree with completely destroyed brush that has nothing at all but you if you, if it has hair it can perform here i am putting down some cool marks because this area is getting reflected light from the ground but not the direct light that is on the right hand side so this is very cool and after you know when you are seeing it from a distance you will be able to see the differences so you can see the light areas of the underpainting is actually helping me um uh, as a guide and i am leaving the underneath marks the thin transparent marks as uh, you know my darker areas i am not uh, you know consciously trying to uh, tamper with them and here my tree is almost done and now i am on to the final detail phase so this again is painted by that small round bristle brush and i'm using the tip of the brush to drag the paint a little to create this long leaf pattern there are many trees apart from the uh, the eucalyptus some are small some are very big so highlights are also there highlights are not straight white they are mixed with some amount of yellow especially yellow ochre sometimes you must not put a white white is actually a blue pale form of palest form of blue so you have to be very careful with white when you're putting it on top of uh, uh, well as a highlight 
now you can see that i'm putting yellowish marks on top of uh, the uh, pale pink color to create the highlights as well there are a lot of branches in eucalyptus trees so i'm paying great attention here and i'll also leaving the side that is not receiving the light now here is a foliage i'm going to paint the darker areas because initially i thought uh, to leave it but uh, while at painting stage there those darks are going to help me now this is a pale yellowish green and it's going to be very helpful and you can gradually see that what i am doing they are very scrubby marks but short marks and they definitely have a starting point and then end is very thin because you know i need to create short stubby uh, abstract effect so it's quite a difficult area and you need to have some uh, amount of experience to handle these things uh, landscape painting is not easy at all you know there is a pressure uh, while you're doing a portraiture or maybe doing a still life to maintain the accur accurate shapes here there is no pressure of accurate shapes but the pressures of uh, creating the believability the atmosphere the textures the things that are there whether they are looking real or not if they are not then you're in trouble you need to correct that so all of these things are uh, very important skies generally look flat so if you have something like a man made object in them like a car or maybe a house or a, you know the material such as plastic in the landscape then you need to be very careful with them and create the distinction so there are very important things such as shape value and color but you can segregate them to very uh, difficult things further and you can see that that part was very cool because it wasn't receiving any light but here it's you know bathed in sunlight and very little shadow but the marks are very abstract because these are bushy trees mostly these are not like uh, you know lush green forest very dry areas so the trees are also very dry but the thing is the absence of air pollution in this area because of uh, you know lack of people it created some of the most vibrant colors i'm not used to because i live in a city and it's one of the most unfortunately one of the most polluted cities in the world so you know we barely see any color in the trees and here it was like you know brightest cadmium greens by brightest blue greens amazing thing so it changed the perspective of color of, uh, you know very effectively in me you can see there are patches of yellow ochre in those big leaves there are many types of uh, you know foliage here so i have to be careful about them about their shapes here it looks individualistic but uh, when they are merged with the other areas they will look quite real highlights are important i am using spotty highlights and this is something that was ridiculed in the past as you know constable snow <coughs> but people fail to uh, recognize that uh, it was an innovation and here you can see the brush grip and the upper part is rounded so it creates uh, a mark that is thinner at the top and thicker at the bottom and 
now i'm leaving again following the same principles of uh, creating a foliage they are not detailed they are suggestive here sort of a cool blue patches but they will be covered with you know thicker lighter colors again the scrubby marks have been very useful here now you can see i'm following a leaf pattern here so you know in order to create something that is naturalistic one must um you know discard the man made uh, patterns and follow the naturalistic patterns that are present in nature so it's kind of a, a paradox in painting artificialness needs to be removed and naturalistic ways are to be included now these are very crisp details so again sort of a diluted you know darker marks same way the when we were doing the branches <coughs> now i am putting down some greens on top of those dark marks to create the foliage now we will be uh, focusing on the ground here are some abstract marks to create some points of interest these are nothing important and this is a flat brush i am using that for creating some connection with the ground it's not separated from the road they are connected so there is some color separation there i need to check that but uh, this is more or less it you can see that uh, the ground is actually cover you know highly very much related to the road which is slightly lower and here i'm trying my best to create the roughness present and that part spots little abstract spots here and there and here the paint should not be very dark it should be just a little bit paler so that uh, you know whenever you have thin bushy things it should be slightly pale because you can see through the underneath and it is already very light so it's affecting the overall color when they are thicker they grow they become darker a lot of warm marks as well an indication of flatness in certain areas I think I'm quite happy with uh, the effect here. There are secondary highlights as well, but the central focal point is the end of the road that as far as you can see. But these are secondary areas. Now this is another secondary area but I'm it's very close to the sec central focal point. warm marks now i'm going to put some spots to indicate that there are muddy or you know rocks that are made of you know solid things that are made of uh, the you know the soil so this is crisp white paint you can see in detail that uh, there is practically nothing there but when you are seeing it from a distance you will recognize this is dry grass that i am trying to paint with very thin paint this is actually dry dry brush to paint dry grass there is practically nothing except that uh, you know very little paint in that here again i am using the same technique with slightly more amount of paint to create the um, highlights or the sky holes 
Now, this is a picture where my wife was actually carrying my boy, who was very small at that time, on her lap. And I took the photograph along with them. But I changed the design a little. So, uh, I'm indicating the lights and shadows. And here you can see I've changed the design a little. As if they are not in hurry. And here is my boy's shoes, turquoise color, his favorite color. Red pants and turquoise uh, shirt as well as shoes. And here is some highlight. And this is another foliage to create that uh, there is something in front. This is like a secondary detail, uh, I mean, of little significance, but they help a lot. And here I'm putting the final white layers on top of this is actually, I think, just maybe slight amount of yellow color to it. It's mostly white and scrubby marks on top of very thick paste on top of uh, the earlier, you know, the underneath marks and they will re reflect the light. So I have finished the painting. You can see the colors in this video because the video was made, uh, you know, for two months, I think over a period of two months. So you can see the sky, the trees, and here you can see the warm layers as well. Some of them are very thin. And this is the tree, eucalyptus. Very favorite tree of mine. And here is the central focal point. And here you can see the ground. And there are some stones that have been painted later. If you like the video, then please click the like button and also subscribe. And if you have any queries, then you can uh, let me know in the comment section below. I'll definitely write back. And please check out my website, www.costumfineart.com. And you can also check other things, other videos on my YouTube channel. So I thank you for your time. Take care.